Oh, this is page 299. And it's f of x equals x uh, minus 1 sixth x squared minus 2 thirds natural log x. Very good. So what are we asked to do? Uh, We're asked yeah. to graph. One was graphing, the other were the Okay, the whole thing. Okay, the whole thing. So I don't need I don't need any. Yeah, the whole thing. That's it, because that's what we are trying to do here. Good. So uh, first of all, it's a very good problem. Yeah, yeah, it's very good problem. First of all, I have <laughs> to find the domain. Can anyone give us the domain of this function? Uh, x is greater than zero, I think. Absolutely, because of the natural log. Right. Very good. And actually, the function is not defined at zero, would you agree? Yes. If the function is not defined at zero, do you think that the derivatives will? Be defined? It, it's a silly question, of course not. Good. So um, I need to determine x and y intercepts if they exist. I need to determine uh, what happens here and what happens here. And then I can start the first derivative and then the second derivative. Good. So first of all, I'm going to find the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of x minus 1 sixth x squared minus 2 thirds natural log x. And I know that this is 0, this is 0. And I know that natural log as x approaches 0 from the right is negative infinity times a negative number, positive infinity. Oh, I'm sorry. I meant here. I didn't discuss this yet. Sorry. I have wrong spot. So then limit as x approaches infinity from x minus 1 sixth x squared minus 2 thirds natural log x. So let's see what we have here. Which of these two is more powerful at infinity? Right. So then this will approach negative infinity. Would you agree? This will approach infinity, but it has minus in front. So still negative infinity. And how much is negative infinity minus infinity? Good. <laughs> so far so good? OK. So now I need to find, first of all, f of 0 does not exist. But I need to find f of x equals 0 which is x minus 1 sixth x squared minus 2 thirds natural log x equals 0. And this is what I could never figure out. Ah. And then just, ah. And I, I used my calculator, I graphed it, and it's like, oh, it crosses right there. So let's plug that number in. And then I realized what I could have done. <laughs> <laughs> what could you have done? I could have figured out the easy intermediate value Theorem yes. <laughs> by plugging it, like going into the table and plugging in like one, two, three, four, and finding out what it crossed in between. What else? Um, using the, uh, the mean. What else? Uh, exactly. <laughs> exactly. What did we learn it for? Exactly. Newton's method. But this was a homework for Newton's method. <laughs> so what? But now you know it. I want to use Newton's method right here, right now. So f of x is continuous on, and we have to figure out an interval. And we will find whatever. And we will have to choose x0, and then we'll find x1, x2, and I think we should stop at two decimal digits. OK, okay very good. So first of all, f of x, f prime of x is? 1 minus 2 thirds x minus 2 over 3x. 
So then x, I should say the function as we wrote it last time, function. I'm sorry, uh, so the second term, um, it's, it's a 1 over 3. Oh, I'm sorry, it's a 1 over 3. Yes, 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 I'm sorry, I'm sorry, 1. Okay. Thank so you. One third. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Can you write that as x over three. Yes. Okay. So if you want, you can write that. So one. Thank you so much. X over three minus two over three x. If you want, and x minus one sixth x squared minus two thirds natural log x. Can you at least, since you did the work, can you at least give me the interval? Four five. Is it? Okay, so the, the solution is somewhere between 4 and 5. Excellent. Good. So let's do that. Okay, so in y equals, we put in the function, which is x minus parentheses, x minus in parentheses, I like to write 1 divided by 6. x squared minus, minus 2 divided by 3. Natural log x. Yes. OK. Divided by, left parentheses, 1 minus x divided by 3. And then minus, be very careful here, 2 divided by, in parentheses, 3x, close the parentheses, close the parentheses. Since you already did that work, I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to start at 4. And um, in y variable, go back, function. Choose function y1 in parentheses 4. And I get 4.818 dot dot dot. Then I go to, I only need two decimal digits, just one actually. You know. So then I recall the previous entry and I put in the previous answer. And I get 4.68. I repeat. And I'm happy. It's 4.68. It, it is 4.68, that's correct. <laughs> the x, the, uh, x, the x intercept. So 4.680. Done so far? Yes? Very good. So now I already have the derivative, which is this. So I know x you know, is not defined at 0. That's fine. And then I have to set f of f prime of x equal to 0 to find the critical numbers, correct? OK. So I have 1 minus 1 third, or x over 3 as you like it, minus 2 over 3x equals 0. The least common denominator is 3x. So this needs a 3x, and this one needs an x. So then I have 3x minus x squared minus 2, or x squared minus 3x plus 2 equals 0, x minus 1, x minus 2 equals 0, so 1 and 2. So x equals 1 and x equals 2 are critical numbers. So 1 and 2, 0 and 0. I study the sign now. The denominator does not need anything because it's always positive, because x is between 0 and infinity. So I'm only looking at the numerator. It has a negative leading coefficient. It's a quadratic function. It looks like this, and it crosses at 1 and 2. So it's negative, positive, negative. Or you plug, you plug in a number. Now I have to find f of 1, and I have to find f of 2 f of 1 will be this 0, and 1 minus 1 sixth is 5 sixth. And when I plug in 2, it's a little bit more work. So f of 2 will be 2 minus uh, 4 over 6, which is 2 thirds, and minus 2 thirds natural log 2. 
and I'll put this in my calculator and see what I get. 2 minus 2 divided by 3 and minus in parentheses 2 divided by 3 natural log 2. Okay, I got 0 0.87. I'm going to say 0 0.9. Okay, now I want to make sense of this and this. See if it works. If they don't work well, I know I have a mistake somewhere. At least one, maybe more than one. Okay, so from infinity to 5 over 6, which is 0 0.83. Okay, so... Um, from positive infinity to 0.83, what does the function do? Does that, okay. From 0.83 to 0.9, what does the function do? Is that okay? From 0.9 to 0. And from 0 to negative infinity. So far so good? Looks good, okay. Now I need to find the second derivative and see if there are any inflection points. Okay, where is my first derivative is this. So I have to find the second derivative now. So this was my page 1, this is my page 2, and page 3 coming up. Okay, uh, so the second derivative <sighs> is negative 1 third plus 2 over 3 x squared because 1 over x prime is negative 1 over x squared. So this is negative x squared plus 2 over 3 x squared. So negative x squared plus 2 equals 0 or x squared equals 2 or x equals plus or minus the square root of 2 but 0 to infinity requires only the square root of 2. So, I, um, I took the, I guess, like the simplified form of the derivative, where it was the end of x squared plus 3x minus 2 over 3x. Oh, no, that's another simplified because you have to use the quotient rule. Well, I prefer this. this. Well, see, I like that one because it's... That's fine. It's they gave you the same answer. That's it. Really happy. That's it. <laughs> that's it. I now, doing it both ways. you so, could have warned me that I have to put a 1.41 in there, but you didn't. Okay, so I have to recreate my chart because I can't, I don't, there is no room. It's more practice for us. It's different. Good. Now, we'll be more careful. So, 0, 1, the square root, which is 1.41, 2, 6, oops, 4.68, 4 and infinity. I know. That's why. <laughs> yep. So at 1.41, the second Yep. Okay, so I have 0 and 0. I have negative and positive. And I have negative. I have infinity. I have 0.83. I have 0.9. I have 0. I have negative infinity. And now I have to determine this. So I have to go back to the function and plug in the square root of 2. So the square root of 2 minus 1 divided by 6 multiplied by 2, because it's squared, and minus 2 divided by 3, and then natural log, really, of the square root of 2. Wow. Okay, I got 0.85. Has to be a number between. <laughs> okay, very good. So now I'm back to the uh, second derivative, which is this. This is always positive, no worries there. But the numerator is a quadratic function with a negative leading coefficient. So it crosses at negative the square root of 2 and the square root of 2. So it's positive and negative. So opening up, opening down. So I'm going to call this an IP. What do I call this? 1 comma 
What do I call this? Two, two comma point nine. I have all the information I need. Ready? <coughs> Bless you. I update your temperature, but it's getting cooler and cooler for some reason. Okay, so when I graph a function with asymptotes, I have to graph the asymptote first. I have to plot one, I'm going to take a big unit, one, two, three, four, five. So at one, at one, even bigger, at one is 0.8. Uh, At 1.41, it's 0.85. Tough. At 2 is 0.9. At 4.68 is 0. Ready? Yes? No? Yes? Okay. From approaching infinity, it From approaching infinity, it um, uh, goes down, opening upward till this point. Then it continues to go to go open up, but it increases to this point. At this point, it has to have an inflection point. It's at an inflection point, so it changes concavity. So all of a sudden, it opens down, but it's still going up to this point. Then continue to, op to open down till the end, but decreasing now to the x-intercept and then to negative infinity. See, I could have not done this with a board, right? <laughs> yeah, I agree. Ugly function. Did I pick this as homework? Yes. Oh. I mean, it, 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 no, it was good. It was, it was a good, good practice. practice. Yeah. It was just the with the natural log being stuck in there. But now we know Newton's Newton's method, so please use it. Thirty-eight was easier. You give us that one. That okay. Right. Very good. Yeah, but please so use good. Newton's method. Remember, now you are very powerful. You can solve any can solve anything. Anything. <laughs> anything. To as many decimal digits with the uh, um, yeah, approximation to as sophisticated as you know, Right, <laughs> right. You can you can come up with as many as you know. Oh yeah, I yeah. see. Yeah, I see what you mean. I can't do all that by hand. That's no, I don't want you to. It's not even possible. Okay, very good. Any Thank questions? You. So it's when the second derivative is zero is when there's an inflection point. Yes. When it goes, change, when it goes it, positive, negative. Or undefined, but changes sign. Changes sign, okay. If it doesn't change sign, there is no concavity change there. I've been able to review videos this week. So. Good. Good. Next question, please. Um, can we just go another Sure. We just did that, but we can. That's okay. Are there any more problems in the book like this one? I'm not what sure. I'm not sure. This is on page 299. There's one with uh, with E in it. <laughs> All right, last one's good. So let's uh, choose for what problem you want. What number was that? Uh, that was number forty-eight. Okay. 
job how you can use login and your attachment. Tell me when you're ready. Yeah, or you, ready. you have a problem? Yeah. What was it, number 48? Number 48 on page 299. Very I good. It all right. Yes, please. Uh, it's even anything but to open this book. Yeah, I'm Just anything. <laughs> <laughs> anything. So it's uh, page 299, number 48. Okay. And it's e to the x over 1 minus e to the x. Great. Oh, this is a function. Oh, I thought I thought we were looking yeah. for Eric's question, for Newton's method. Oh, that's yeah, that. No, no. This is what are you doing with this? We are we are no, graphing no, everything, no, no. everything. Okay, good. Well, we may we may need to do that anyway, but I didn't forget. I will show another one. Okay, ready? Yes. Okay. Is was was this on homework? No. Oh. <laughs> Very good. First, I have to find the domain. Always domain first. The rest, kind of, you know, you can. You're you're restricted. You have to find the first derivative first, and you know, uh, you can find the second derivative. But domain is always the key because I don't know what to put up here. Good. So how do I find a domain? Can anyone tell us? You have to do this. You have to write this, you have to solve it, and then you'll get the domain. So you have to f of x equals 0, f of x is undefined, and then the limit as it First undefined for the domain. Okay. First undefined it for the domain, and then I'll find the x and y intercepts. Oh, that's right, yeah. Um, so, what happens at so 1 minus e to the x cannot be 0. Correct. Which means e to the x cannot be 1. Which means x cannot be... So the domain of this function is everything but zero. Now I can establish or make a list of things that I need right away, meaning about the function from the function itself. I need, in, I need the end behavior. I need the behavior ne near the vertical asymptote. And I need x and y intercepts. And that is everything that I can find about the function, from the function itself. Agreed? OK. OK. So then um, limit as x approaches negative infinity from e to the x over 1 minus e to the x. So when x approaches negative infinity, the top approaches just think that you plug in e to negative infinity, which e to negative infinity is 1 over e to infinity, which is perfect. So the top approaches 0. What about the denominator? Right? Right. What does this mean? Zero. zero. So zero here. I did use negative infinity. I cannot conclude about this just yet. So for now, I will say y equals zero h a at negative infinity. So now limit as x approaches infinity from e to the x over 1 minus e to the x. What is this? Right, but still infinity over infinity, which means L'Hopital's rule. So then, limit as x approaches infinity, e to the x prime, the denominator. Which is 
Good. Now I cannot plug in zero. So there is no y intercept because this is a vertical asymptote, but I have to solve this equal to zero because I need to find the x-intercepts if they exist. So I lost track. This was four, so this is five. So e to the x over one minus e to the x equals zero. Cross multiply, e to the x is zero. Never. Because the graph is this. So there are no x-intercepts, no y-intercepts, but now I need this. So I need to find... Did you work on this problem, or you're just giving up? Oh, okay. No, I have Oh, okay. A limit as x approaches 0 from the right, from e to the x, over 1 minus e to the x. The top approaches... One, and the bottom approaches uh, zero negative. So let's see. Right. Yes. Yeah. So zero from the uh, zero from the right hand side. Careful. It's a little bit more than one. Careful. So careful. So this is indeed the zero for now, but now let's look. So let's put in y equals 1 minus e to the x. Ah. OK. And now let's go to second and calc. No, second and table. And I want to put in 0.01. negative point oh oh one good enough so then what will I write excellent okay now limit as x approaches zero from the left from e to the x one minus e to the x it's still 1 over 0, but when I plug in, let's go to the same function. When I plug in negative 0.2, let's say, I get positive. So that's how I know that this is positive infinity. Okay, I exhausted everything that I can find about the function from the function itself. This is it. Any questions? Any questions? Okay, so we are done to next step is f prime. Okay, the top function prime is e to the x times 1 minus e to the x minus e to the x times negative e to the x over 1 plus e. Oh, why did I write plus? Let's take a black I meant 1 minus. Thank you. 1 minus e to the x, everything squared. Any questions on this, on the derivative? So top function prime is e to the x times the denominator minus e to the x times the denominator prime and over the denominator squared. So this is e to the x <coughs> minus e to 2x. Copy the base at the exponents plus copy the base at the exponents, divided by 1 minus e to the x squared. So this is e to the x over 1 minus, why do I really want to write plus, squared. Is this function <clears throat> ever 0? No, because e to the x can never be 0. 
What is the sign of this, no matter what? Yeah, the denominator is squared, and e to the x is, is this graph. It's the e to the x. So the top is always positive, the bottom is always positive. So, nice. What does this mean about the function? What does that tell us about the function? Always? Always increasing. Now, I hope that uh, my numbers here and this match. From 0 to infinity, what does the function do? Supported, yes. From negative infinity to negative 1, the function... Good. So now, I want to differentiate this. Awful. So the second derivative then, the top prime minus the top times 2, 1 minus e to the x times negative e to the x over 1 minus e to the x to the fourth power. What do I do now? Without which I will never get anywhere. Thank you. So, first of all, this comes out one from here and also e to the x. So I have e to the x and in parentheses <laughs> I, I always put plus instead of minus. I, I just don't know what to say. Wait, why would it be squared when there's no minus? Because that's the, the quotient rule. Top prime times the bottom. No, but there's not, no, but there's there's, only there's not enough. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. <clears throat> oh, that's squared. Yeah, I thought you were... Yeah. Of course. That, I don't know. Okay. That has no okay. place in there. Of course not. Okay. So e to the x is out. One of these is out. I already said that, but I wrote something else. So then 1 minus e to the x is left. This is out. This is out. So then plus 2e to the x over 1 minus e to the x to the fourth power. Let me check as I wrote stuff. e to the x, one of this, one is left. Then these two are out, but I have a negative 2 times negative e to the x, which is 2e to the x. Good. That's nice. One of them goes away. And then e to the x, and in parentheses I have one finally, thank you, plus e to the x. I'm happy now. 1 minus e to the x to the third power. It was finally a plus. OK, so um, we know we have established. No, we haven't established that. Uh, so e to the x, 1 plus e to the x, 1 minus e to the x squared, and 1 minus e to the x. I separated the 3 into 2 and 1 because I know the sign of this and I don't want to mess with it. What is the sign of all this? All is positive. But I have to ask myself, what about that? So, if you remember, when we calculated this, to the left of 0, it was positive, and to the right of 0, it was negative, or the other way around. So in y equals, I already have that. See? 1 minus e to the x. That's all I need to study the sign of this. And when we went to second and table, we had to the left, to the right of 0, negative, and to the left of 0, positive. So therefore, the sign of the second derivative is positive here and negative here. So opening upward, opening downward. No inflection point because the function is not defined there. The function must be defined even if the second derivative is not. So if the function is defined at this point, that will be an inflection point because the, the second derivative is undefined, but it changes sign. But the function is not defined there, so it cannot be an inflection point. Ready to graph this? OK. Y 
when I graph a function with asymptotes, I have to graph the asymptotes first. And there are three. This is one. This is the other. Oh, I don't know. I, I guess I'm tired. But I'm not, actually. Y instead of, yeah, I wrote y instead of writing <coughs> x equals 0. And uh, at positive infinity, I have this. Ready? OK, so the function from approaching 0, the function from approaching 0, or the asymptote, goes up to infinity on the left-hand side of the vertical asymptote. No problem. Let me use a different color. Um, let's say this. Now, on the other side, the function opens downward. It's coming from negative infinity. It's increasing to negative 1. It's a real nice function. So this is e to the x over 1 minus e to the x. Quite nice. Let's also do this with a graphing calculator. <laughs> so the function is um, e to the x divided by, no, not there divided by, in parentheses, 1 minus e to the x. Of course, I have to put in y equals negative 1. There is no need to put in y equals 0 because it's there anyway. I know what uh, viewing window I should use. The standard will be fine. So okay. go to zoom standard, and that's the graph. And no, it's not coming from below. Uh, the x-axis, the calculator is lying. Okay. It looks like it's coming from. See, all of a sudden it's intersecting here. No. So if you change the viewing window just to see that this is not the case, uh, let's say I change the viewing window to um, uh, negative ten to zero and to um, negative 2 to 2 and graph it's still looking like it's intersecting yeah like it's crossing and coming yeah. up It can handle it. So it looks like the blue line is thicker than the graph, than the, uh, uh, the x-axis. Right. So that's probably why it looks like that. You know that e to the uh, this function cannot have an x-intercept because e to the x is never zero. Yeah. So no matter what. Good, very good. So, or, or you can go to the uh, second end table and punch in two. negative two, two, punch in negative five, <coughs> punch in negative seventy-eight. They're all positive values. Good. Yeah, but they're all positive values. You cannot come from negative. Mm -hmm. We know that. Good. Good. Anything else? Very good problem. Yes, yes, please choose a Newton's method. Uh, in section 4.8.
Oh, I was saying that. Yes. Um, so can we try one from, from just like coming up with one? Or? Sure. Okay. Now the problems in the in the book um, have solutions not at uh, negative ten thousand or positive ten thousand, so that's why. But it doesn't matter. Yeah, let's make one up. Like for example, let's say cosine x uh, equals uh, tangent x minus one. So first of all, I have to write cosine x minus tangent x plus 1 equals 0. So this is my function. We have to punch it in to find what? The um, margin. Well, the interval? Yes. Where the one sign is negative and the other sign is positive? Because it's a continuous function, yeah. So in y equals clear. So we'll punch in cosine x minus tangent x and plus one. Remember mode is has to be in radians. So second and table. Okay. Oh, I see something happens in there between possibly seven and eight or eight and nine. I don't know. Let's see. I'm gonna punch in. Um, zero, one, one, two. Okay. Zero and one. one. Between zero radians and one radians. Okay. That's fine. I'm sure there is more than one solution, of course. So it's continuous uh, on the interval 0, 1, and uh, changes sign. Oh, f of 0 is positive, f of 1 is negative, and by IVT, there exists a C in the interval 0, 1. So now I have to find f prime, which is negative sine x uh, minus secant squared x. So then the function that I use is x minus cosine x minus tangent x plus 1 over negative sine x minus secant squared x. Here's what I'm going to do. Please pay attention for a moment. I'm going to factor out this negative 1 and that will take care of this. So I don't want to have so many parentheses. So cosine x minus tangent x plus 1 over sine x plus secant squared x. Is there a name for that function? Or is that just Newton's like method. Newton, uh, that's just it's Newton's method. Is there like an abbreviation for it or anything? Or no, I would call it a function because that's why I don't want to give it f of x to be confused with something else. So that's I why I just. Like a special symbol for it. No. So this is what we are going to put in. Ready? So in y equals. Now let me see if I can use this. I can. So I will write insert x minus in parentheses. This will be the top. Oh, I changed it to plus. Yeah, I changed it to plus. So this will be the top and close and divided by in parentheses sine x and then plus I don't have secant squared but I have 1 over cosine squared 1 divided by uh, in parentheses cosine x and squared and close the parentheses Okay, so now with second and um, uh, go back to this was my y1, so variables y1, and I put in parentheses 
uh, let's say I want to start with, I can start with either one, but I'm going to start with one. One radian, I get whatever, and then a uh, second and uh, entry, and I just overwrite um, the previous answer, and I get this. <laughs> <laughs> and then I get this. It converges extremely fast. So if you want two decimal digits or you want four, or you want is four okay? Okay, so then in that case, x equals point nine nine five nine. What do you do to get the, the y1 screen? Um, say it again. Um, uh, the, the y1 on the calculator. Uh, it's right uh, here on the variables. <coughs> variables. So go to variables, go to y, and then you call function uh, y1. Okay. And in function y1, we plugged in 1. So the solution is extremely close to 1 okay. radian. <coughs> Good. Anything else? Or can we go back and review other things? Are we done with the graphing? Have we mastered graphing? Uh, oh my god. I'm kind of still a little shaky about the, um, okay. your chart. Okay. I thought, I thought that was the, the clearest of all. Well, it's really weird because, like, I'm looking at their version of how they do it, and, like... But why do you need to look at them, their version? I can I cannot understand it. I cannot graph a function from what they put it. Here's their version. They do it on, like, intervals. Oh, we have This should turn off by itself, back and forth. <laughs> I just yeah, say, yeah, snap my fingers. And, okay, I, I don't even try to look at it. <sighs> So across the top there, is that where they're putting the I have uh, no idea. The function and the underdivided? No, these are some these are some yeah, these are some uh, uh, parts of something. See this is the first derivative here, so this is the mm -hmm. I I don't know. This is oh I guess it's this x and it's this piece and it's this piece. And then they study the sign of the second derivative and just one chart is just for the second derivative. I don't recommend it, but any questions? So one more time, do we need anything from graphing? If you say yes, let's choose another. If you say no, yes, that's fine. Okay, I'm looking on page 352. I'm on page 352 under the review for chapter 4. Uh, please choose a function from there. 19 through 34. There are no functions here, and we did not graph a function with a slant asymptote. And I would like to graph one with a slant asymptote. So I'm going back to page 317 and I will choose if I find one. Yes, I found one. Um, no, I didn't find one. So can you look at it and tell if it has a slant? Yes, a yes. Very easy. No, no, that's not nothing sophisticated. Okay? okay. So if a rational function has same degree over same degree, at infinities will have a, slant, a horizontal asymptote that is the leading coefficient over the leading coefficient. Let me let me explain that. Yeah. So with rational functions, we have three situations. For example, 2x plus 4 over x minus 1. This is one type. Here's the second type. And here's the third type.
Okay, and we can graph any of these, or all. Now, this is same degree over same degree. Remember, you factor out x, and you get 2 plus 4 over x. Factor out x, and you get 1 minus 1 over x. These two go away. So at infinity, or negative infinity, this will approach leading coefficient over the leading coefficient, which is 2. So that's your horizontal asymptote. If the top and bottom have the same degree, degree 1, degree 1, degree 2, degree 2, degree 3, degree 3. This one, when you do the same thing, <coughs> what will this approach when the degree in the denominator is bigger than the degree in the numerator? This approach is 0. So this is 1, but I still have a 1 over x. So it's 1 over Right, which is? Zero. Right. So every time the degree at the bottom is stronger, bigger, at infinities you'll have 0. Because you divide small by strong. And that's only at infinities. Now this one does not have a horizontal asymptote. The degrees are not the same and the degree at the bottom is not bigger. The degree of the top is exactly by one unit larger than the degree of the bottom. That's the only one that has a slant asymptote. Degree 2, degree 1. Degree 10, degree 9. Yes, but I'll show you how. Oh. Yes, and I'll show you how. Degree 5 over degree 4, degree 11 over degree 10. Those will never have a horizontal asymptote, but they have a slant asymptote. And yes, the end behavior will be infinity or okay. negative infinity. I mean, because so far that's all I've been looking for is that end behavior, whether it's a number or infinity. Right. So, okay. Right. This is the <clears throat> only one that has a slant or sometimes called the same thing, oblique asymptote. Okay, so, and not a horizontal, only an oblique. So let's work on this one. Ready? Domain. Let me bring this in the middle.